let, let me ask you this. How do you survive in a town that is isolated from surrounding communities? Well, our colleague Justice Beidou has been to Dodoma. It's a small town in the west district of the Upper West region where the lack of a road network is causing deaths and tells us how the villagers are using their own communal spirit to keep the path to their homes usable. Life in a town that has no road network connecting it to its sister communities. The villagers of Duduma, a community in the Wild West district of the Upper West region, do this at least once every month. It's their own way of making sure the path to their home village is kept neutral all year round. The Upper West region, Ghana's poorest, is also home to some of the country's most terrible road network. In fact, sometimes we feel like we are not part of Ghanaians because we, we, we think we have been cut off. Because when you lose a relative, a when you lose a relative, which is not supposed to be so, because if we have the good road network, if somebody is appearing at our time, we can call the ambulance to rush fast to send the person to the hospital to save the person's life. But because of the nature of the road, and we have been, people have been dying when they are not even supposed to be dying. Many of the roads in this region are like this one, untarred and run down. And hundreds of thousands of poor people in vulnerable communities like this one are the people who pay the hard price doing for themselves what a government should be doing for its people. For some people in this town, working on this road brings back memories of pain. Like middle-aged Ya Chiribonte, her 14-year-old daughter was just preparing to write her BEC last year, died because no car could come to Dodoma to convey her to a hospital when she had complained of a headache. There was no motorbike. And when we called for someone to come and pick the child, they said it was too late for them to come because there's no road. I don't think it was her time to die. I wanted her to go to school to become a nurse or a doctor. But now, she's gone. Like many other parts of Ghana, more than 90% of people in this region farm for survival. And yet, basic problems like a lack of good road network reduces income levels and further perpetuates poverty. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Uduma. Well, down here in the crowd, the Inspector General of Police, John Kudalo, has reiterated his intention to get social media banned on election day. The IGP, who was widely criticized when he made the proposal earlier this year, fears social media, if allowed during uh, the voting period, may disrupt the electoral process. The IGP, who was addressing personnel of the police service in the eastern region Tuesday, says persons who initially opposed his proposal are now buying into the idea. <laughs> of deceased Upper East Regional Chairman of the New Patriotic Party on Tuesday told an Accra High Court how her husband named the main suspect in the case, Gregory Afoko, 
as the one who attacked him with the acid, which eventually resulted or caused his death. Adams Muhammad died in May last year in what many believed was an attempt by a political agent to get rid of him because he did not get along with the NPP chairman then, Mr. Paula Foucault. Gregory Foucault, who is said to be the brother of the suspended NPP chair, has been in custody since his arrest. Uh, Joseph Akable was in court on Tuesday and filed this report. Foucault is being held on the charges of conspiracy to commit crime and murder of the late Adams Mahama. Hearing started with the introduction of Hajia Zinabu Adams, the wife of the deceased, and is believed to be the last person to have made contact with the husband before his death. As the first witness for the prosecution, senior state attorney Matthew Amponsa led her to give testimony. She told the court her husband left home at 7:30 a.m. on May 20 and returned at 11 p.m. She said she was alerted of her husband's arrival when she heard him screaming for help. Her husband then told her that the younger brother of politician Paula Foko and one Asaki had poured a substance on him causing the pains he was experiencing. Mr. Adams was then rushed to the hospital where he later passed on. On several occasions during Tuesday's session, lawyer for Gregory Afoko disapproved of the court's interpreter's narration of events as stated by the prosecution witness. But there was also a sharp argument between himself and the prosecutor over a police medical report. Lawyer Kosa told the court he was yet to receive the report from the prosecution, but lawyer Amponsa explained there couldn't have been such a report because the police was never brought into the matter before Adams Muhammad died as it wasn't a police case at that time. As a result of the legal vacation, hearing of the case would not resume until October 11, further prolonging the number of months the main suspect, Gregory Afuku, will be in prison custody. For Joy News, Joseph Akable. Some members of parliament are questioning the relevance of government's decision to upgrade some selected polytechnics into technical universities. A bill to that effect is currently before parliament for consideration. Government is hoping that when the bill is passed, more emphasis will be placed on science and technology, as well as technical and vocational education and training. But some MPs who are opposing it say government should rather concentrate on improving infrastructure and resources in the polytechnics to enable them play their defined roles effectively. Here's a report by Elton Burby. The bill is seeking to upgrade the Accra, Hall, Kumasi, Sunyani, Koforidia, and Takrade Polytechnics into technical universities. The other four, namely Borga, Cape Coast, Wa, and Tamale Polytechnics, will have to meet certain conditions before they can be upgraded. In its report, members of Parliament's Education Committee are convinced redirection of polytechnics redirection of polytechnics towards vocational skills development and applied science and technology will provide an avenue for students or professionals with a desire to build their skills and competences and obtain degrees and other qualifications in disciplines which are not offered in the traditional universities. The committee is however divided on what title to accord heads of these technical universities. Whilst the Education Ministry is insisting on maintaining rector for the technical University, the committee report wants the heads referred to as vice chancellors as pertains in the traditional universities. But for some MPs who contributed to the report, government should rather focus on improving the resources of the polytechnics, arguing change in name, if not backed by the necessary logistics, will not yield the ultimate goal. I stand to support the motion to convert the polytechnics into technical universities uh, because it is going to cure uh, the, psycho the psychological problem where a lot of people believe that you do not attend the university, then you are not well educated. Except that the quality, if you are not careful, may suffer in the sense that the few technical schools in this country are under resourced and they are in fact even collapsing. Neither in the bill nor in the report has anybody told us what a technical university is. What is it? We, we are not given that definition anywhere. We are just loosely using the correct technical. So we must be careful. It's obvious that 
the committee thinks that when you rebrand uh, uh, from vice chancellor, director to vice chancellor, then you have a technical university. That is so wrong that we will be deceiving the public. It's a noble concept that we should carefully understand what we are doing. In fact, I, I envisage that if it is done properly, the caliber of people that will go there will have to find resources to pay them. The concern is that, as, as you say, are you going to face up the polytechnics? That's the concern. Well, it's captured in the memoranda. And we are now discussing the principles of the bill. Captured in the memoranda here. But Education Minister Professor Nama Jeno Pokwajiman says the concerns will be addressed at the constitution stage. The purpose of this bill is to establish technical universities by converting the qualified polytechnics to technical universities in order to provide higher education in engineering, science and technology based disciplines, technical and vocational vocational education and training, applied arts and related discipline. Member of Parliament for Subin in the Ashanti region, Isaac Osei, is hopeful the issue of job placement and academic progression, which is the most challenging issue for polytechnic graduates, will be given attention with the upgrade. Your handsome people who have had attachment, you see, during the period that they are training, they go for attachment at the industry level, you know, and um, that link which uh, the government is saying will be tightened uh, because it's raised to a university level, that one I do not agree, because the polytechnics all over the country are already doing that, you know, sending their uh, students. Sometimes we in industry request for certain types of uh, polytechnic uh, students to come on attachment and immediately they finish, we take them on because we have seen that they have the capacity to quickly uh, learn and, and do the job for us. Now let's turn attention uh, on some lifestyle issues. An unhealthy lifestyles, bad eating habits and ignorance is said to be accounting for an increasing number of diabetes and a lot more of uh, relevant chronic cases yet in Ghana. And a number of people also do not know what their status is. So the question is, how do you look out for the signs and symptoms? Here's a news desk report. Diabetes is a very common disease in this part of the world. With more people becoming overweight, diabetes and heart disease are often quick to follow. Bad dieting and food intake are common causes of diabetes. Junk food and busy shadows makes it too easy for people to fall into trap of lazy and bad habits. According to a report released by the World Health Organization in 2015, 75% of the cases remain undiagnosed, posing an increased danger of complication for people living with diabetes unaware. It is also estimated in the report that the number was likely to reach 820,000 by the year 2035 due to the aging and expanding population with diabetes accounting for 8.6% of deaths from all causes in adults. Deputy Chief Nutritionist at the Ghana Health Service, Kate Kwashi, advice on how to eat healthily. You know, if you look at diets of people in urban areas, it's more of a unhealthy diets because of you know and so therefore we should all be aware and should be conscious of the things we choose mm. you know the kind of foods we choose to be able to make up for you know mm. it's very important we seem to be all chasing you know uh, money and the good things we do not realize that in not, not paying adequate attention to our diet we are either creating problems for ourselves okay. until we have a good diet in the morning you need to give yourself time to take a, a healthy breakfast. And that is very important. A lot of us, you know, skip breakfast. And then we end up picking all the unhealthy things. Mm. You know, it really doesn't matter what you prefer. It is the combination. If it's water you want, make sure you have some vegetables with your water and have your fruits in addition. You see, the focus now should be increased consumption of fruits and vegetables. Okay. So whatever you are taking, whether it's um, the tea and you know cocoa or whatever make sure you are having if enough vegetables and fruits with your meals all your meals i think that and then cut back on salt 
cut back on sugars and um, oils. But somebody... According to the International Diabetes Federation, it is not that simple to say that eating too much sugar causes diabetes. This is because type 1 diabetes is caused by genetics and unknown factors trigger the onset of the disease, while type 2 diabetes is caused by genetics and lifestyle factors. Being overweight does increase the risk of developing type 2 diabetes and a diet high in calories from any source contribute to weight gain. Research has however shown that drinking sugary drinks is linked to type 2 diabetes. Another grossly exaggerated claim about diabetes is that people who are overweight eventually get diabetes. The fact is, being overweight is just one of the risk factors for developing diabetes. There are other factors such as family history, race, ethnicity or even age. By understanding all the risk factors involved, one may better understand his or her overall risk and the habits one can change to be healthier. But it is important to know that type 2 diabetes can run in the family. But how will you know you have diabetes? Some health professionals advise look out for these signs. For the majority of people, the symptoms of diabetes start with feeling tired easily, you test more than usual, you realize you have an increased need to drink, and you feel you have an increased appetite and yet losing weight. Then you seem to urinate a lot, at times not frequently, but it tends to be in huge volumes. When one have a sore, it takes quite a long time for it to heal, while some people tend to develop itches around their genitals. According to reports, diabetes has reached epidemic proportions in Ghana, hence the need for an urgent plan to deal with it. The Public Interest and Accountability Committee has disclosed that proceeds from Ghana's petroleum revenue, which were used to rebrand 116 Metro Mass Transit buses in 2015, has been refunded in full to public coffers. According to the chairman of PIAC, Professor Paul Kinsley Bois Baswa, an amount of 3.65 million Ghana cities, approximately 9% of transport sector allocation from the petroleum revenue, which was used for the rebranding of the buses, uh, have been refunded. The 3.6 million Ghana cities bus rebranding contract for 116 buses awarded to Smarties caused a public outcry, resulting in the resignation of the then sector minister of transport. Jifa Ativo in December last year. Civil society groups and political parties raised issues regarding procurement challenges and bloated contract sum paid to Smarties, among others, which led to a further probe by the Attorney General's Department, hence the subsequent refund. Six inmates of the Abofor police station near Ofenso in the Ashanti region are said to have escaped from their cells Tuesday morning. Well, it is not clear how the six were able to break out, but the Offensive Divisional Police Command uh, has given the policemen on duty at the time of the escape 10 days to find the fugitives. Our colleague in Kumase, Erastos Asari Donko, is joining us via phone to tell us what's new with this particular issue. Uh, good morning, Erastos. Good morning. So what else should we know about this story? Well, uh, what has happened is that yesterday when I went to uh, Abofo, the a number of the policemen there have been set out uh, with the task of finding uh, these six people. Uh, the police will not disclose their identities and uh, their profiles according to what crimes uh, have been committed. What they are saying is that that would jeopardize uh, their efforts to rearrest them. And so uh, by close of day to day, then they will be able to release their pictures and names uh, to the media. Uh, so for now, uh, the place is uh, quite deserted. In fact, the cell uh, has been opened and uh, men in the area are set out to search for them. Mm. Now, as we've seen the hall on television, it's pretty small. Do you, or do the people in the community buy the story of the six coming out of that little hole? In fact, they are expressing uh, doubt, just like you are saying. 
in fact, uh, many of them who have gone there in their numbers uh, to uh, catch a glimpse of uh, the whole, uh, they are saying, well, this is impossible. Uh, but then, I don't know the size of, you know, these uh, <laughs> fugitives. So, I would be able to judge uh, whether indeed the hole is too small for them or uh, it's too big for them. Well, I have seen a demonstration by uh, some armed robbers uh, how they enter such a hole at uh, Ahidema Kokobe. Uh, so, somewhere I think it could be possible. All right. Uh, Erasta, so what's going to happen today? Is there a press briefing or something? Uh, is the police going to be explaining further what happened yesterday? Well, today I've been promised by ACP Ebru uh, Kwasin, who is in charge of the offensive uh, divisional uh, police. Uh, he is saying that they are going to uh, give us some further information because they were following uh, some clues yesterday and they think that by today, uh, close of day today, they will be able to give us further information as to their identities, what crimes they have committed, and all that. So we are hoping that we get more information today. Mm. Sadly, the whole is, it has been patched because I was going to say, maybe you should demonstrate to us how the, the <laughs> ad robbers <laughs> went into that hole on television. Uh, but thank you, Arrestus, for your time this morning. We'll catch up later on. Uh, that's our colleague with Lava Firm in Kumasi, Arrestus Asari Donko. Very surprising, that hole. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know, and I know many of them will be men. Uh, guys, there are six, there are six, all of them are men. Six men, men. Yes. yeah. I know men like entry hole, but that hole is too small. Like your head alone? Yeah, I'm wondering. You can squeeze your body, but how do you squeeze your head? How do you enter? Men can, they, uh, well, you can squeeze yourself into holes. Okay, okay, okay. we're not talking about other holes yet. That's it for the M News. Stay with us. Uh, we'll come back with the newspapers and visit some of the news portals. You're watching the AM show. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you.